Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. This is the 2022 Tour de France preview. This year's three weeks of racing in the Tour de France are going to be fantastic. Starting off with the individual time trial with 13 kilometers long, we'll automatically start putting the favorites fighting for the general classification in a little bit of a pecking order here at the Tour de France. We get into stage two, three, four, and five. We got exciting flat chaos stages with two and three up north and then the cobblestone on stage five. Now, when I woke up this morning, UAE Team Emirates listed their eight rider squad for this year's Tour de France and three from last year's edition won't be reappearing here in 2022. Those riders, Davide Formula and Rui Costa, the Portuguese riders, two of them were up doing Giro d'Italia, so we didn't expect to see them in the eight-rider roster starting the 22 Tour de France. But Mark Hershey, who we had expected to be on the eight-rider squad, is not appearing. And I got to assume it's probably because the UAE Team Emirates COVID protocols when they left Tour Suisse that possibly Mark Hershey might have been affected from that. When we look at the riders replacing them, George Bennett, fantastic climber, no doubt, rode for Jumbo Visma at many crucial times throughout the Tour de France stages for Primoz Roglic, and now with his jump going over to UAE Team Emirates, he's going to be an important key role in the mountain stages. But he doesn't do the flat stages that fantastic. He's coming on a bit of form now, been a little bit off throughout the beginning part of the season, and then we saw him, saw him start to shine form-wise on the last stage of Dauphiné. With that two-week break between Dauphiné and Tour de France starting, it's really about three for a climber like George Bennett because he gets the two weeks of training before the Tour de France and he gets the first five, six, seven, eight stages here at the Tour de France before he really starts to have to shine on stage nine. Now, the next rider that's up to bat that's a climber is going to be Marc Soler. Soler, I got to be, is the rider that replaced the other Mark, Mark Hershey, as the one of the most important key lieutenants when we start getting up into the mountain stages. Now, what I really want to see out of Mark Solaire, though, if we get to see the Solarism, because this rider always has a little bit of around him of a bubble of chaos that happens. I don't know if it's naturally produced from Mark Solaire himself or if it's the bike racing itself that produces the negative effect that Mark Solarism has around him so often throughout the season when we see him racing. If you remember, right, if we go back to Catalonia, it was a bit of a crazy last, second to last stage there where Marc Soler just sat up and dropped out of the main contenders there and dropped back. Now, when you look at this year's Tour de France and you look at Marc Soler, there's no time for any shenanigans here at the Tour de France, Mark. You got to be perfect. You got Tadej Pogacar on the team, and he's won the Tour de France two times already, trying to make it a third. So Tadej Pogacar is going to need 100% focus of Marc Soler. Now, my discussions throughout, talking with directors and talking with other riders, Marc Soler is well-liked on the team, and everybody's happy to have him at this year's Tour de France put in on the squad for the UAE Team Emirates. Tadej Pogacar has got one key lieutenant for the flat stages added into this year's 2022 Tour de France, and it's in the form of Matteo Trentin. Now, the other three riders that departed, when you add these three riders in, the one I like the most is right here, Matteo Trentin. He's not the pure climber. He's not going to be the super domestique mountain, mountain provider for Tadej Pogacar. But when we're talking about this crucial first week of racing at the Tour de France, I don't think anyone else's job on UAE Team Emirates is going to be more important than Matteo Trentin. This rider can ride the classics and he can keep his main GC race leader out of trouble throughout this whole week because he has experience, he has the fitness to keep him at the front, and he knows when he has to be there for the cobblestone stages and any of the technical difficulties that may arise at the finish of these first flat stages of the Tour de France. The two workers early for UAE Team Emirates, Vegard and Mikhail Berg, this role is always crucial. You may not get to see these two riders riding often on the front because they've already done the first 130, 80 miles of the stage. And they're going to be incredibly important stage two, three, four, and five. The longer these two riders, Mikhail Berg and Vegard, can stay in the front, the longer they can rest the pure climbers. You don't want a rider like George Bennett having to do a bunch of work on the flat stages. Otherwise, it's going to have massive effect on the climbers' legs when we start talking about getting into Plange de Belfi and later at Alp d'Huez. So the Flatlanders, when you're talking Matteo Trentin, Vegard, and Mikhail Berg, these three riders are incredibly important because if there's a big crash early in the race, 
and Tade Pogacar is left behind. This is where the power comes from at UAE Team Emirates for this whole first week of racing. And then when we get in the mountain stages, when you start seeing the super domestique climbers start to shine like Rafael Micah, if in order for them to be good in the mountains, these first three riders, Matteo Trentin, Vegard, and Mikhail, they have to be fantastic throughout the first five, six, seven stages here of the Tour de France. When we dissect the stages a little closer, the most important stages for UAE Team Emirates, Tadej Pogacar, a little bit of focus has to be on stage one of the Tour de France just because it will set the pecking order a little bit and decide where your car it will be in the caravan. So if Tadej Pogacar can have a top performance here early on stage one of the Tour de France or one of his other teammates, but it should be Tadej Pogacar. But for UAE team members as a whole, someone has to have a solid 13 kilometer time trial so that on these flat stages, their car is set up in the right position closest to the back end of the peloton in case Tade Pogacar has an untimely mechanical at any point in time in the first week of this Tour de France. Matteo Trentin, if he does his job correctly, will see him riding spectacularly on the cobblestones trying to keep Tade Pogacar out of trouble. When we start talking about Plange de Belfi on stage seven, this is when Tade Pogaccia really has to go to work. When you go up this last summit climb to the finish of stage seven, there's really no rest for the wicked on this stage because the final climb only has one little plateau about two kilometers, three kilometers from the summit of this stage seven. We get further after the first week of racing, the first nine stages that is, and the next stage to really look after is going to be Alpe d'Huez. You have Col de la Coiffeur that climbs before that. So when we get on Alpe d'Huez proper, if Tadej Pogacar has his kind of fitness from 2021 or what we saw him perform like at Slovenia, then on this stage here to Alpe d'Huez, expect to see Tadej Pogacar, if he's not already in yellow off the Plans de Belfi, trying to put himself in yellow on Alpe d'Huez. When we talk about the last final week of racing here at the Tour de France, what excites me the most is going to be those two stages coming up because they're both short on 17 and 18, about 140 kilometers each. But the second of the two on stage 18 is going to finish up Eau de Camp. Whenever you have stages under 140 kilometers, you know all the riders can go 100%. At this point in time, there is no room for mistakes. Tactically, the racing has to be spot on. Hopefully, when it comes to having mechanicals back with the car, the car has practiced all their techniques perfectly, like we saw at Tour Swiss with UAE team member. It's Mark Hershey when he flatted, when UAE team members were absolutely spectacular with their mechanic, their director, and their second car all coming in quickly to get Mark Hershey to the back of the peloton during that stage, early stage in Tour Swiss. Tadej Pogacar needs to have a fantastic management and directors in the back of the car for those two crucial mountain stages on this final and third week. Now, the most important stage of the Tour de France has to be this 40 kilometer individual time trial because even if you were fantastic on Alpe d'Huez and Otacom, this last individual time trial at 40 kilometers long, and if it's got a Primoz Roglic chasing a Tadej Pogacar only 30 seconds back, anything is possible. And we might see a reverse of fortune when we're talking about the 2020 Tour de France, Tadej Pogacar winning on the last individual time trial, second stage from last. And then possibly this year, we might see a change of fortune here for Tadej Pogacar and Primoz Roglic flip-flop and rolls from 2020. Could be a spectacular Tour de France if Everything goes through this first week without any big incidents amongst all the GC favorites like we saw at last year's 2021 edition. Now, if I'm the director of UAE Team Emirates and I'm looking at this squad, I already told you guys I'm excited. I believe this squad looks better than last year's edition. But there's always things to worry about and always things to focus on. And the biggest worry has to come from Jumbo Visma's Jonas Vinigo and Primoz Roglic. We saw Jonas with us. Uh, flying fantastic spectacular form at Dauphiné's last stage eight where he just lit the whole field up and won the stage and wrapped up the general classification for Primoz Roglic. Those two went one two at Dauphiné and here at the Tour de France they're going to try to one two attack Tadej Pogacar all the way up through these last mountain stages and this is where the pressure gets put on the super domestique climbers from UAE team members and I'm talking about Rafa Micah. If Rafael Micah is not climbing as good as Jonas Vinigo or Primoz Roglic, which I wouldn't expect, I'm going to assume he might be chasing when those two riders start attacking Tadej Pogacar, trying to get him isolated. Rafael Micah's sole goal here when we're going up these last mountain stages, if Tadej Pogacar is not going solo up the road and he's getting attacked one and two from Jonas and Primoz Roglic, 
Rafael Micah has to stay at the back and always do damage control. So he puts pressure on the two Yumbo Visma riders to have to pull on the front, pulling Tade Bogacar instead of being able to have the gap back there to any UAE team member at Super Domestiques where they can one-two Tade Pogacar and try to wear down the Slovenia. This, this year's edition looks fantastic on paper when we're looking about the GC favorites and how well even matched they are. Of course, Tadej Pogacar, Primoz Roglic are in a league of their own, but Jonas Vinigo with his stage eight, like I said, that Dauphiné, he could have all of a sudden come up to that same level, and we might be seeing the number one rider in the world, Tadej Pogacar, have in the fight against the two best GC climbers in the world, talking about Jonas Vinigo and Primoz Roglic, and they're both on the same team. We got a spectacular 2022 Tour de France to look forward to. And remember, when these flat stages finish, Itade Pogacar has got to be able to light the afterburners in order to be able to drop both the Yamba Visma riders because nobody wants to go into a 40 kilometer time trial with time being even against Primoz Roglic and Jonas Vinigo because one little hiccup the night before, the calories were a little bit light. You didn't quite get the warm up just right for the 40 kilometer time trial. And all of a sudden, Tadej Pogacar could lose this year's Tour de France the same way Primoz Roglic did on Plange de Belfi in 2020. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll break down some more stuff with a couple more stages, a couple more empty days left here to cover on Beyond the Coverage before the Tour de France starts proper on Friday. I'll see you guys on the next edition really soon.